Hey, what's going on, Rattlers? So 10 years ago, in 2011, I was filming the movie Herpers 2, which is available for streaming. That link is down below. But I featured Triple L Reptile here in Oceanside, California. And back then, they were in a much smaller location. Now they're in this huge location. And we are going to do a little update video of sorts from how it looked in the movie Herpers 2 to the brand new location that they have here in Oceanside, California. So I'm going to meet with Renee and he's going to give us a tour of Triple L Reptile. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. So this is Renee, the general manager of Triple L here at Oceanside. There's now what? There's Triple L Vegas, oh, San so Diego. We actually have a location in, we have two locations in Vegas. We actually have a saltwater store out there. It's uh, called Reptiles and Reefs. Uh, we also have our Las Vegas location. We have Menifee, Escondido, San Diego, which is going to be in our Mission Gorge area, uh, Oceanside. And then we also have a store opened up in Peoria, Arizona. Wow. So this has grown in the past 10 years since the last time I was here oh, to... Absolutely something huge. Lauren is a genius with this stuff. I mean, he really is. But uh, anyway, we're going to do a little tour here. We're going to go, you know, obviously we can't show everything that's here, but we're going to show the awesome stuff that's here. So what are we starting with? So what we're going to start with right now are what we'd like to call the bread and butters of the reptile hobby. And these are going to be some baby bearded dragons. Everybody loves a beardy. Now this is not an uncommon first pet. All right, most kids are usually gonna start with this. If they don't want a gecko, they want a little spiky lizard that likes to eat a lot. And that's gonna be these guys. Super friendly, don't mind being picked up. I mean, this guy just climbed right on my finger. They're definitely not camera shy. Yeah. Just an all around, super cool, cute pet. Now these guys, as they grow, in about a year, if fed properly, will actually hit a size of about 16 inches. And now we actually have some adults here that I can show you in comparison to what you should be seeing in about a year. This is gonna be one of our adult male reds. Now this guy, he's not even a full size beardy. We've actually, we actually get some pretty big ones here from time to time. And as you can see, the demeanor, still very docile, loves to be held. Really nothing to worry about. Kids love these guys. Absolutely. And honestly, I get more adults that buy these than anything. Right, these are like the perfect pet lizard. All right, so this is another Lizard that is extremely underrated in the hobby. This is an agama. So these are going to be our painted agamas. Now the males are going to have some pretty striking colors as you can see. The females are going to be a little bit more dull, but nothing too crazy. But as you can see, the males like to stand out and really show off for the women. Kind of like how we like to do still to this day. Absolutely. Now one thing that you should know about these guys is they are very, very fast. So these guys are kind of hard to catch. And as you can see, Woo! he's running along. Not really a fan of me grabbing them. Yeah, yeah. But the, the care of these is very similar to bearded dragons, very except that they need dragon. much hotter temperatures than exactly. a bearded dragon. You definitely want to give them kind of close to like a Euromastix. You actually want to give them a good basking spot of about 110 degrees. And on the cooler end, you're looking at about 95. Yeah, exactly. Still really not that cool. Exactly. Very uncomfortable for us. Right. So when I was in Israel and I filmed the Euromastics in the wild, these guys share the habitat of the Euromastics. So yeah, heat is key for those. So I'm looking down here and I see another native Israeli uh, lizard here. But these are actually native to Europe and they just kind of dip down into the Middle East. But these are just amazing little lizards. All right, so how many people come in here and point to this and say, look at that weird snake? Oh, uh, we just about every single day we're going to get day, somebody. Right. Yeah. Now, these guys are super rad, very freakish looking. I don't know if you've ever seen Harry Potter, but I, I kind of like to call these guys the Voldemorts right. of the reptile world. Now, look at this guy. See how he's just spinning around? Yep. Such a weird. <laughs> lizard and the cool thing about them is honestly almost half their body is all tail all so their tail, vent right. is going to start right about here and you work your way down 
It's actually more than his body. Yeah, you know, in this country, their cousins are called glass lizards because, Correct. you know, that tail is so much of their body length that when they break it, they literally break in half, hence the name glass lizard. Correct. But these are of the legless lizard clan, and these are the ones found, you know, in Europe, in Asia. Now, these guys are super cool to watch hunt. Uh, you can actually feed them crickets, but at this size, we like to feed them some little hopper mice from time to time. And these guys will actually just start spinning around ridiculously, just trying to disorientate their prey. It's really impressive to watch. These are just amazing. All right, moving down to the white throat monitors. White throat. All right, so this guy is giving you a little kiss there. So he's super friendly. Whoa, right out of the cage. That's exactly where we wanted you, buddy. So this right here is one of our baby white throat monitors. And as you can see, he is super active, very healthy, and very hungry. He loves to just kiss the tips of my finger. Right. He doesn't ever want to let go, but that's okay. So this guy, what's really cool about him is, as a white throat monitor, a lot of these guys are usually imported, but this is actually one of our captive bred specimens. And as you can see, I mean, these beautiful, beautiful pattern. Absolutely. No blemishes. You can still definitely won't see let the difference between wild caught and captive bred. Exactly. For sure. Especially with the attitude and the energy. Right. And the bite strength. Yeah, the majority of these are all imported from West Africa. But man, you get a captive bred one and that's the one that you want. That is a feisty little guy. Now, these guys are pretty cool. I mean, you're looking at about a five, five and a half to six foot monitor once it's full grown and they're very, very big body. Right. They're the Tony Sopranos of monitors. Oh yeah, look at that stomach already. Look at that big old belly. And still doesn't like being touched. Yeah, yeah. He'll calm down. Yeah, eventually. All right, so here we've got a green tree python. So these guys are super rad. Now this is actually one of our sub-adults and this is one of our Bioc green tree pythons. Now this is kind of a funky color for a Bioc. They it usually, sure is. Yeah, they usually like to have a little bit more yellow on them, even as an adult. Uh, but this guy's got some cooler pattern going on, so it looks like he might be mixed with something else. Yeah, that is a funky pattern for a Bioc. Definitely. Now, cool thing about the Biocs is they are actually one of the largest species when it comes to green tree pythons, usually topping out at about six feet, sometimes even seven feet. Not right. too often, but it happens. Now, the biggest thing about green tree pythons is they're honestly more of a visual pet. They don't really prefer to be handled uh, because these guys live a life in the trees. Bunk. And that's why they don't like to be handled, as exactly. you can tell. And now I got some beautiful little marks on my hand. Look at that guy. Look at that face. He is always ready. Yep. And the key to these snakes, honestly, is just if you do get bit, you don't want to pull your hand away. They do have a very, very sensitive vertebrae. And if you pull your hand away, you can actually injure this snake uh, rather gravely. So moving down to the end of row number one, you know, I just want to kind of point this out that, you know, when you have all these reptiles on display, some of them get, you know, some of them need time to be acclimated. And it's really cool that you guys, you know, put this bag over this to give them the security that they need instead of just opening that up to the public and further stressing out the snake. That's really cool. But look at this big guy. That is a sizable carpet. Now, this is one of our Indonesian carpet pythons. She's actually still fairly small. It's not uncommon to see these guys get to about 10 feet, right. sometimes even pushing 11. Um, even though this is a rather large body snake, this is actually a semi-arboreal snake that it's not uncommon to see them climbing up brush and small trees in the wild. All the carpet pythons that I've seen in the wild, except for the ones crossing the roads, are up in the trees, up in the rafters of old barns. Right. Yeah, Love they are the quite arboreal. I'm not saying that we ever lose a snake here at Triple L Reptile of Oceanside, but if for some reason we ever did, the first thing we do with carpet pythons is we try to start looking up. Uh, all right, so moving around the corner here, look at these newts. So what we have right here are what we call Spanish rib newts. Now we actually have two different morphs of these. We actually have the normal coloration, and then we also have the leucistic coloration, which is basically lacking all of their dark pigments. Now the cool thing about Spanish rib newts is they get their name from a very funky defensive uh, defense that they actually have. So you can see very lightly, there's a bunch of little tiny dots going down the side right here, almost in a perfect line. And what these guys do in the wild is if they get scared enough, when a predator goes to pick them up, they'll actually break their ribs through their skin and they'll actually inject some toxic That's right. uh, 
into their body. Uh, and that will actually give off a bad taste and could definitely mess that animal's mouth up. How'd you like to break your ribs every time somebody comes up to you and threatens you? Uh, you know, I've thought about it a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> All right, so this is the frog wall over here. So this is actually one of our Mexican leaf frogs. Now these guys are super rad. A little different from a lot of frogs. Now what these guys like is, believe it or not, they like to be a lot warmer than most frogs. So these guys are super cool. Uh, Care-wise for this is a little different than most frogs. You'd actually keep them more like a bicolor or a waxy tree frog. So they actually like it a bit hotter uh, and they actually like a basket spot, believe it or not. And with most frogs, you would want to kind of give them a mist. But this guy, you wouldn't want to drench his cage too much. You'd give him a light mist in the morning and he's pretty much set for the rest of the day. And they get a little bit bigger. You're looking at about a frog that's going to be about this big. Nothing too crazy, but still super, super rad to look at. All right, I got to break out of the reptiles for a second to check out one of my favorite arachnids here. This is a Goliath bird-eating tarantula. Well, this guy is super rad. Now, what this is, this is a new world species of tarantula. And what they have is what is known as irritating hair. So what this guy is going to do is when he gets disturbed, or when he gets disturbed, he's actually going to start kicking a bunch of hairs off of, it, off of his abdomen or he's going to lunge at me. Their first mode of a defense is actually going to be to kick their hairs off. I don't know if you actually saw a few of those come off. Yep. Oh, there, there they are goes. right there. Now I'm not going to mess with them too much just because I really don't feel like him having a bald spot at such a young age. Right. Uh, but super cool tarantula. I would have taken him out for you, but as you can see, he's already pretty stressed. Yeah, yeah. So I think we'll leave him alone. All right. Now those guys are pretty cool. They do get a rather impressive size. Yes, they Sometimes do. Sometimes even having a leg span of 11 inches. Right pretty intense and at this size this guy can already take down pinky mouse but as a full-on adult you can actually give them the occasional adult mouse if you really want to be cool uh, and you can give them that just about once every month a lot of people do like to overfeed these animals uh, and in the wild their bodies aren't meant to take in that much fat and protein so you can actually unfortunately cause an early death for a lot of these spiders exactly. if you overfeed them all right so very cool tarantula just needed to break into the reptiles. Now let's go back around the corner over here and see some more really cool reptiles here. So we've got the leopard geckos. We've got the boas over here. We've got more bearded dragons, more crested geckos, more gargoyle geckos. Man, I could sit here and play with every single one of these, but you know, again, we don't have time to look through everything, but I do want to show you guys the Madagascar three-eyed geckos. These guys are so incredible. So the Madagascar three-eyed iguanas don't get too large. So you guys, you see these guys right here, they're pretty much babies at the moment. They will get a little bit bigger, nothing too crazy. Usually, usually looking at about eight inches, all the way up to a foot, a little bit more with the tail. Now the cool thing about these guys, now they do like it a bit hotter. Um, and a lot of small animals like this are gonna be insectivores, just like this guy. They will be eating some type, some vegetation, but not too much. They get a lot of their energy from proteins and fats, which is going to come from the insects that they eat. That's exactly right. All right, so moving down the line, we've got some European spotted turtles over here. I love these enclosures like this. And over here, who did you say was in here? Oh, we have some African side necks. Oh, these are the, oh, there he is. There's the African side neck right there. Yeah, so these guys actually, unlike most turtles where they just pull their head in and kind of hide, these guys will actually turn their head to the side when threatened and just expose. All vital organs. Exactly. <laughs> like exactly. to expose their jugular. But what's cool about turtles like this is, though that might seem like a bad defense, what a lot of people don't realize is on the very bottom of their shell, in their carapace, it's actually hinged. So they can actually close that, as you can see how that moves. Yep, yep. It'll actually close and they can do it to the back side too. This particular species, not so much, but the front side will pretty much shut right off. Very cool turtles. All right, so this is Levin here. He works at Triple L, and he is going to show off one of these amazing leopard geckos that can be found here. Yep. So this is a uh, male blazing blizzard leopard gecko. Uh, this is one of the many varieties that we get at the store. So he's got this nice regrown tail here, so it looks kind of funky, right. a little bit fat. These are really cool geckos, great for kids, great for adults, easy. Um, not much more to say about them. They're great lizards. It's exactly right. I mean, like bearded dragons, they are one of the perfect pet lizards. They are. They're great. All right, so moving down to Chameleon Row here. All right, so this chameleon is really incredible, and I haven't seen a lot of these in really any reptile shop I've toured. Yeah, so the ocelot's chameleons, as you can see, actually have a rather high amount of energy. 
Now it's not too common to see a chameleon just kind of going at it this right. fast, uh, but they can. This guy in particular just absolutely hates me, which is not uncommon with most chameleons. A lot of chameleons, you know, they don't really have another defense other than to blend in. Right. They're not fast runners. They don't really, they can't really bite too hard. So, you know, once they're spotted, they do tend to stress out like this guy is, unfortunately, at the moment. Yeah, look at how dark he's getting. Super rad, though. Yeah, now we're not this... going to play with him too much because I don't want to stress him out any more than he is, but I just really wanted to show these just really incredible chameleons. Right. Now, this is actually the second largest species of chameleon, second to the Parsons. And then you also have the third largest, which is the Mellie's chameleon. Now, these guys, not only are they the second largest species, they're also the second longest living usually hitting about 10 years, sometimes even more in captivity. But with an animal like this, and especially with a large size, they have a very, very big diet and they have a large appetite. So Madagascar has all the cool stuff, including this guy. Yeah, so this is a Madagascar leaf nose snake. These guys are a little bit tricky in captivity because they do usually only take to eating on uh, geckos, specifically house geckos. So fortunately, house geckos can actually be found in a lot of the uh, southwestern United States as an invasive species. That's right. Yeah, and so if you're uh, in an area where you got those, it's a perfect food source for these guys. And cheap. And not to forget, with this particular species, they are sexually dimorphic. So the males will have that strong nose, just like that, nice and pointed. And then the females are gonna have a nose just like that, but it's also gonna have a bunch of little feathers almost coming off. And it looks like a little maple leaf. They have one of the most unique noses of any snake species. That is a cool snake, and that is a perfect place to end our tour of Triple L. Guys, I want to thank both of you for uh, showing me around, showing me some of the cool reptiles you guys have. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, look at the love. I just love this place. So guys, from the past 10 years when I was here last to seeing what Lauren and his crew have built Triple L into, man, this is really an incredible pet shop and a really incredible company. So I'm gonna put all the links for Triple L in the description below. Anyway, guys, there are more reptile adventures coming from here in Southern California. So be sure to give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.